Hi, Paleo Paul here with some of my favourite crocodile fossils and an enduring problem in fossil collecting. I have here the jaw and the skull of a crocodile from Cambodia. Why are crocodiles my favourite fossils? Well, I did my PhD looking at fossil crocodiles from Australia. And since my PhD, I've spent a lot of time collecting crocodile skulls and fossils from all around the world so that I can continue these studies. Now, these two come from Cambodia, and what we've got here is the lower jaw of a crocodile. You can see that here are the tooth sockets. And to give you an idea of the overall size of this croc, it's reckoned that the overall length of a crocodile is about one-eighth the length of its jaw. So this guy would have been clocking in about two and a half to three metres long. This skull is off of a slightly smaller individual and you can see it's almost complete apart from an area at the back of the skull here behind the eye. So what you're looking at here are the eye sockets and this is the nose socket. Around the outside on the underside you can see where the teeth were and the internal nares where the airways come in is right at the back of the skull here. So there's this long, hard, bony palate that is a signature of modern crocodiles, a group called the Yusukia. Now, I said that there's an enduring problem in fossil collecting about these specimens. And that is, I bought these specimens on eBay. This is a real problem because when you purchase fossils, it can compromise their scientific value. Usually the collection data on bought fossils is not good enough to be able to do anything sensible with it in the scientific literature. All I know is that these crocodiles came from somewhere in central Cambodia. Now this is possibly a new species, but I may not be able to name it simply because it's been taken out of context because it's been purchased on the open market. Another problem with purchasing fossils is that if they go into private collections, then there is a, uh, a manner of working in paleontology which says we won't actually do scientific studies on specimens in private collections. That's because you want those specimens to be available in perpetuity to other paleontologists to come along and check on your work. So you want your specimens to be in a public collection with open access, not in a private collection where they may simply disappear. So why did I purchase these fossils? They were already available on the open market. Anybody could have purchased them. And if it was someone else, they may have just disappeared forever, never to be seen by science and paleontologists ever again. So at least by purchasing these fossils, having them in my collection, and by having a policy that when I finished with this collection, these fossils will go into a public collection, at least that way we've managed to salvage something of these magnificent fossils for the future of the science of paleontology.